not yet. Then you can start. I have time to start. Okay. Okay. Yes. So this chapter is um the missing values and the learning objectives are uh, to fail and indicate when there are explicit missing values. And in the case of those um when the missing values are implicit, then you can also make them more explicit if you need it. So and also a way to get um empty groups when needed. Um the first time you know, we already have seen missing values in, in, in the past, but in this chapter we will go um deal with them in a little more detail. Uh, for example, the first time when we had it was with the ggplot when you with the penguins, and it was showing that it removed two rows because they had missing values. Um, also, in the with the with the flight when we were working with the flights, there were also cases where there were information with with missing values, and that we can that you can use the NEA. RM, that's the remove any, that you can either set it to false or true, depending on whether you want to keep or, or discard the, the missing values. Um, also, we saw some that of their um, their nature, uh, how, how they behave, the, the, the missing values, so you cannot, the, so the missing value you cannot say it's um greater than five greater than five because it's it's not available it's not available so there is no value to to assign it so you can I can say if it's greater than five or equal to ten or if a missing value is equal to another missing value so it's just uh basically all those will um go to and become also missing values because. You you cannot have that comp that type of comparison. The the one way to get the comparison is to actually ask if it's a massive value, and in that case you will see it's true if you ask for a massive value. Um. So those were the cases where we saw missing values in the in the earlier chapters, and now we are going to look for um, the explicit missing values, the implicit missing values, and also groups where there are. There are empty groups. It's a data set that have uh, empty groups. Um, in the case of explicit missing values, it's, it's more, uh, so to speak, it's more uh, easy to spot. The ex for example, in the cases where you have um, entered data by by um, by hand, uh, in this case, you have the persons, the treatments, and the response. So in this case, the missing value, it's not that they don't have the name, but just that they mean that you already put on the, the name, Derek Whitmore, and the two following are also for Derek Whitmore. So if you are doing it by hand, instead of copying, you just put an, uh, you can just put the NA. The same with the response. If the treatment was 10 and the next one is also 10, you can put the missing value. Meaning that the before is still um the 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 value before is the one that's that's still valid for this case. Um, one way to um that you can fill that in that case is using the tidy error to a function to fill, and then you can. It's the it's done so. Again, if you have the first and then you have a couple of NAs, then you can say, okay, use the first one and go down till you, there, when you find another that's not NA. So the ones that NA, you will fill in with uh, the name that, that was before. And that's what you get here and also with the value. Yeah, the, the one that you get is the, so the names, it will fill them automatically here. And the value also that was a NA, it will copy the one that's above it and copy it down to fill it in. 
Um, there are also cases um, in older software or depending cases, some people will put instead of a, when you have an NA, you can use a value. So after that data set, and if you have a Mason value, you can say, okay, I don't want to have an NA, but I want to have a, a zero in that case. Then you can use the coalesce um, function to replace them. So in this case, you have one, four, five, six, one, four, five, and seven with, with an NA. And if you do coalesce X and zero, it will change the NA for a zero. Also, if you have a I and a Z um, vectors and you have them with um, NAs, if you do coalesce from with I and Z, it will get the, replace the NAs with the values in, in the other in the other vector. Um, in, instead of coalesce, you can also use the replace NA, NA when the case you have multiple columns. And in this case, you if you for example, you have a table that's one, two, NA and A, NA and B. You can use a replace NA with a list. So where you can say that the X, when there is an A, you will replace it with a zero. And in the Y, when there is an A, you will replace it with an unknown. So there, here you have the one, two, and A will become a one, two, and a zero. And the A, and A, B will become A, unknown, and B. Um, also, the cases that this is something that I have seen and actually used in the past is when you have uh, um, values, you have, for example, the sensor reading or um, the data that you that are in a in a, in a certain uh, range, um, logical range or, or, or natural range that they are in. So like um, age, there's there's nobody yet that we know of that that's uh, a thousand years old. So you can put an age as uh, one thousand and uh, nine hundred ninety nine, and uh, that you can use that one as a, a, a value that's missing or not not available or unknown. Or whatever. So in those cases, when you are reading in the data, you you know that that strange value, that's that out of range value, you are using it to actually show either a missing value or a or an NA. You can um, then read the CSV and use that value. And uh, also, if you already read in the data, and uh, if you read in the data and uh, want to replace it otherwise, you can also use uh, deployer NA if, which in that case is whenever you find the value, replace it with an NA. NA. So in this case, the minus 99, if you use um, NA if X is X minus 99, you will change the this one for NA. Um, there are also a distinction between an NA and a none. That's another number. Uh, none is when you have a mathematical uh, mathematical implementation that has an indeterminate result. Result like uh, zero uh, dividing by zero, or uh, multiplying zero with infinity or infinity minus infinity. Those kind of uh, um, mathematical expressions don't have a uh, uh, definite uh, results. So even though they, in general, the nuns behave just like NA, in the case that if you multiply an, an NA with a number or a nun with a number, they, they, they what what we saw in, in chapter 12, the infection, they, they get infected, so to speak, so in this case, um, yeah, if you don't know if it's not a number, it will also become an NA or a none. If you compare with uh, equality, if X is equal to one, you don't know, you cannot um, do that. But in this case, um, in the first case, in the multiplication, it's, it's giving NA and none. In this one, it's giving NA and NA when you are looking for um, comparison. And in the case of, if you really want to know if it's an NA, 
then you will get a NA for both. Um, uh, any and or a none, and if you want to distinct, if it's a none, then you will have to use is none. Then an any will be false, and a none, that's the one that will actually show you that this is true. So any, so a none will most of the times um pose, so to speak, as an a, a none as a will pose as an any, but the any if you specifically ask for is a, is it a none. It will return a false, whereas a none, when when you specifically ask if it's a it's a none, that one will um return a true. Those were cases where the um missing value was uh was explicit. It, you you could see it in in the data, but there are some cases where the missing value is implicit. So in this case. If you have this data set, for example, of stocks, when you have the year, the quarter, and the price, one explicit NA is the one in 2020, fourth quarter, you don't have the price. But then you see 2021 starts with two, three, and four. So the first quarter is not, uh, not even here. So it's... it's, in this case, an implicit uh, missing value because if you are considering a year and you are considering quarters, you should have um, four, four different values. But if you have only three, then implicitly you, you're saying there's one missing. Um, in this case, if you, if you use a pivot wider, using um, with the names from quarter and the values from price, you will see that information the NA for the fourth quarter of 2020 and the NA that was implicit becomes explicit here because now you have the 2021, the first quarter that's also missing. Um, in the case of making longer, instead of wider, if you are going to use a pivot longer, you can um, preserve the explicit missing values, but you can also decide to, to drop them. So if you put um, drop NA a true, when you use a, a pivot longer, you will have uh, you will not have the explicit. In this case, if we don't use it, so we use the pivot longer by year and the quarter and, and price. If we don't drop the NAs, they will um, show up in the resulting table. But if we do the same and we use the drop NA, NA then we will not have the fourth quarter and the first quarter because those were NA. Um, one other way of uh, showing implicit the missing values is by using a complete. If we look at the complete um, of, uh, at the stocks um, data set again, we see we have the 2020 and the 2021. And in this case, the price is for fourth quarter of 2020 and the first of uh, the, in this case, we are seeing the one that was um explicit, the NA that was explicit. We will see only the fourth quarter of 2020. And if we use the tidy and the complete, then we will make the other one go, um, explicit also. So the implicit one will become explicit. In this case, the fourth quarter of 2020 is, is being shown and also as an NA and also the first quarter of uh, 2021 is being shown as an NA because you used um, tidy air complete. So uh, another another case another example is um, if you use if you want to use um, because our original data set is only 2020 and 2021 if you are going to use um, if you want to have the range from 2019 to 2021 you can tell the year the range of uh, of the year so if you put in this case the 2090 to 2021 
whereas your other information is only from uh, 2020 to 2021. You will have all the information for 20, 2019 will be an ace when you show that information. And if you, obviously, if you use complete, because if you don't, it will not show up. It's because you're using complete and you are saying, okay, um, show me the information for 2019, even though the data set only covers 2020 and 2021, you will have those um, those prices for 2019 being shown as a name in this table. Um, the yet another way to show um, implicit observation is with um, the anti-join. And the next chapter is actually about joins. But um, yeah, we are showing like a preview with this join of, of to use uh, to, to get the information of data that, that is missing. Um, in my case, I was, I, I forgot more or less about that um, data set. So I, I had to do a little glimpse about it to recall the, the information of the of the flights and all that. So but yeah, when 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 you have the, the information of, of the flights, what you are doing here is that you are getting the information, the FFA FAA that's of the because you have the flights um data set and you have the airports data sets and in the FFA you have the the numbers and in the flights what they are going to look for is in all the destination um and all the destination airports they want to get the unique values of those um, destination airports from the need from the New York flights um data set they want to get those destination get the unique um values and then get the their information from the um, airports the metadata all the information from the airports um data sets and by doing this you will find out that um this there are four airports that are destinations in the in the flights um data sets that don't have their metadata data information in the airports data sets. So the way of doing this is getting the distinct, uh, so the unique values of, of the destination in, in flights, and then, <clears throat> sorry. And then when they do the join with the flights airport, and then join it by F, F so from the destination flights, and then you get the airports data when you join by the FAA um, column, then you will get the resulting information, the resulting uh, airports with their names. So the, their names that don't have um, their meta data in the um, airports data set. There is also a similar case from airplanes that are in the New York flights um, data sets, but they don't have their metadata in the plates in the planes metadata data information. So in this case, something similar, you get the tail tail number of all the fired flights from NU NYC flights. You get the distinct ones, and then with the anti joins, you're joining. <laughs> The, the planes, so the tail number that you have from flies, then you're joining with the, the data sets of planes, and then you will get, in this case, 722 um, tail numbers, so um, planes that don't, <clears throat> don't have all their information in the metadata of, of the planes data sets. Um, this part was not in the, in the text, but uh, an extra that was in the in the in, in the slides 
um in this case what what is what we're trying to do is what happens when you have information extra information so in this case if you have the, the penguins with sample like these one two three with their species and their island and if you are going to have, have a, a table with that has extra information so in this case it has sample ids that's zero or sample ids that are four and five that are sample ids that are not present in the in the in the in the penguins uh, data when you're going to do a join you will get an, info, uh, an, an, an error because if you are going to join by sample id and you have in the original only three different sample ids but in the in the in the weight extra you have uh, six different um, sample ids it will give an error because the the number of rows are not matching so in this case you can use the anti join to see which are the ones that which are the sample ids that that are not matching and in this case you will see that it's 0 um 4 and 5 a similar case is the the other way around imagine you have again the sample ids 1 2 and 3 but then when you are going to have the weight of oh, you only have the weight of 1 and 2 so in this case you are missing again when trying to do an inner join you will have a, a, a an error because uh not matching of the of the of the rows it will again give you a, a, a error and in this case again you can use the anti join and it will show you the row in this case the sample id number 3 that's that has the missing the missing information so in this case what what we are seeing what we can get as a like a lesson here is that you can use the anti join to see where where the data is miss, missing so that you can um act accordingly maybe maybe you so that you can yeah either clean your data or you have updated information but at least you know where the data is missing um and here this last part was mentioning is that in case of um, multiple matches that's not something that that you can solve it will give you the, the the error message but in this case you have again the three penguins one two three but here you have two cases with with the sample id two and in this case again the numbers will not match and also um but you, you and in this case you will not able to see that that it's because it's double so that's the thing that you cannot resolve multiple matches so it will in this case tell you that it's not um because it's saying you it, it must match at most one row then you can gather the information that there is somewhere there is a duplication Okay, um, here's the exercise that was also um, to find the relationship between the carry and the rows that appears to be missing from planes. So basically it's, it's also going to, to it's, it's to get the information of also the carries like we saw before that there were um, um, airports and planes um, that they didn't have all their information. So in this case, we can do something similar for the carrier and then get the information, the, um, we can get that carrier information and see who's have, um, who are the, who are the carriers that have missing information in the planes, um, data sets. So in this case, you will get the tail num tail number and the carrier um, from the from the flight, and then, which is uh, all all the all these rows, and then when you do an anti join by the tail number, you will 
you can then get the a table with the missing tail numbers, which in this case are 720 case, um, 728 cases where there is a missing tail number information. And this list part is uh, about uh, factors and, and, and groups. <clears throat> that is, for example, if you know that, that you have different group in your data set, but one of the group doesn't have any observation in, in this specific case, then you can uh, also um, see those, uh, those groups where there are, where there are factors with that have missing values. So for in this example, if you have a group uh, with health information, when you have the name of the person and if they are um, a smoker or not, or not, and when you see there are smokers, you can either be a smoker or non-smoker, but in this specific group, no one is a smoker. So you have only no's. So in this case, if you will ask for, a, you count for the, for the smoker, for example, you use the count function to count the number of smokers. You will see that there are five. So everyone is non-smoker from the five people. Everyone is non-smoker. So actually that tells you implicitly that um, if uh, five is non-smoker, there are zero that's, that are smokers. But that information is not being shown here because count will, will only look for the where for the values that, that are explicit in the data set. So if you want count to keep the groups because you defined that you have a yes group and a no group in the smokers. So you can do the count again. And in this case, drop the false. In this case, you will see, yes, there is zero. So zero people smokers and no five. So five people that are non-smokers. Um, so this is, for cases when you really want to show, okay, there's a group, there's a, a yes or no, or a smoke or not smoke, or a whatever group that you have that have different factors, different levels. But if one of those levels doesn't have representation in that uh, data set, and you want to show it, you want to explicitly show it and show that that it that level is um, defined, but there are no data, so a zero. So then you can use the drop files when you are using the count in this specific case. Um, this also when you, if you're going to um, plot the data, you will see something similar. If you do it for only the smoker, you will see no smoker and you will see, see the five, but this will not give you any information that there are, um, there, that there are, um, that there is also a group of, of smokers, even though their information is zero. So in this specific case, if you also drop the pulse um, in, in the plot, now you will see there is a group that yes, but it has zero observation, and you have a group of uh, no, that has all the, um, the observation, in this case, the five, ob the five observations. So this type of plot is, like the the knowing that there is a group, but there are there is no information, there is no observation in this group is also um, important for in this case. Um, another another uh, place when you can see that uh, same effect is when you use the group by. Um, if you are going to group by you, if you are going to group your group um, by, of your health data set by, by smokers, and then you want to summarize, if you don't, um, if you only do it with the, with the explicit data, you will only find information about the known. So that you will have five people, you have uh, the, the average age, the minimum age, the max age, and the standard deviation. But if you use the drop files, you will get some, some interesting information because the 
yes, group is has zero data, but so you will find that it's zero in people in that group. And then because you are getting information, so the mean and the minimum and the max will give some, some interesting info, um, data because uh, a none because you are doing a mean on a, on a zero value. So this is the, the vector with no information. If you are dividing, get an average and dividing by, by zero, that will give you a none. Um, so this information, yes, it's it. You you are not able to get in in, in this type of table with this information. It, it's basically, um, I think you should be doing uh, uh, some check before to to check if there are zero groups to catch this type of of of, of errors or to at least try to present them on other ways. Um, so in this case, yes, this is the same info, this is the same. Um, this is the explanation of, yeah, what I already said, with when you are dividing by zero, that's why you are getting this first uh, none. And because you are looking for a, a minimum age or a maximum age in, in information that's not available. Um, what I find strange is though is why the minimum is infinity and the maximum is minus infinity. That's um that's a little strange, but uh, there, there will be its reasons. Um, one way to do to have those numbers instead of uh, doing the drop files, you can use again the, the 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 complete function that we that we saw. That way, the implicit missing values that we make them explicit, and in that way we can then we can use the the smoker uh, the grouping um, and group by smoker. And in this case, you will find all because you are now um, explicitly putting not available, you will say that information. But in this case, um, the only drawback, so to speak, is you will have a zero, a, a not available also for the count, even though you know that, that it is a zero. But maybe this information is uh, prettier to the side than the nuns and ifs and, and strange information. So it's uh you have to decide which option to use. And this part was also not in the in the text, but is from the I'm seeing from the side they were getting from a, a forecast block. Um basically what it's saying is that there are different ways that you can represent uh, a missing value in a factor. Factor. So, for example, if we have factors x, y, n, a, n, a, and x, and if you do the exclude n, a, when you um, ask for the levels, you will only get x and y. But if you want to use the n, a um, as factors, then instead of excluding the NA, you can exclude the null values. So in this case, you have X, Y, NA, NA. So it is an NA, but it is, it, it's not null. And in this case, when you ask for the levels, you will have X, Y and NA, but as a, as a level. So that's, it depends on, on what you need. If you want to have the, one to also show the, the NA as a factor in, in your analysis. Um, and you can see also that there are different behaviors when you use SNA. So when you ask um, if they are NA or integer, again, if we have F1, if we ask if it's uh, NA, we will see it's true only when the um, when the factor is, is really NA. And if you are going, if you treat them for as integer because um, the factors are mapped as numbers, then you will have uh, 
want to NA NA because the factors that are NA will not be are not considered a, a factor, so they they will not be assigned a value. So they will be NAs. And in the case for the case of F two, where we are using NA as as factors, so instead of excluding NA, we are excluding null. So in this case, when you use SNA, then you will see that everything is false because NA is considered a factor. So um, that's why if you put a SNA F2, you will only get false. And if you um, ask is F2 is integer, then you will get NA represented as a, as a as number three, as a factor number three. So as a level number three in, in the factors. So this is a way that you can use so that you can um, have NAs and that you can order them um, when you are using plots or when you are um, doing your analysis. So in the factor in the forecasts um, library in the, in the factor, you can now use uh, any value to level or any level to value. You can use the, the these functions to switch the, the, the different ways of, of managing the, the NAs. And in this example, what we will see is what happens if you let NA be NA or when you um, use it as a factor. In this case, as an example, we are having an example the data frame where we have the hair colors and when we have the missing and don't know um we are we are some data that's missing and some data that's uh where there is don't know and if you plot that information you will see the na at the top because you don't have a way that you can um so it's being shown in the in in the plot, but you can you you, you don't have a way to order order it or, or manipulate it. But if you want to have all the missing values and the others, then you can use, for example, any level to value, and this in this case the NA, then you will use it as a factor that's called missing. And for example, if you have values that are don't know, you will also put them in missing. And all the NAs, you will also um, code them and create a, a, a missing. So in the, right now you will have missing that will represent all the don't knows or all the NAs that are a factor or all, all the levels that are NA also, you will, um, put them in the missing factor. When you do the same thing with the, the that type of, of recoding, in this case, when you plot it, you will have the information of non brown, black, white, and blonde hair. And then you have the, the missing, the missing and the other. So here you can order the with in this way you can order and you can um, easily more easily show the information about the NA once you know how to put it in, 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 a, in a specific group that's uh, interesting for, for your analysis. So basically that's that about the missing values. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Some, yeah, this. <laughs> Sorry, I was late. I uh, was writing and totally lost track of, of time. So. <laughs> no, no, I, we, we were discussing of, about uh, continuum, but uh, yeah, we said. Let's well, let's start because otherwise we will be postponing and delaying the other um, right. next weeks. Well, I am glad you you went ahead because uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> I would have felt bad about that. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, yeah, and this one, I, I, I yeah, the, the, the one thing that, that stood out to me because it's something that I use or something that I deal, dealt with is using values, uh, out of range values. And in my case, like if, if I'm working with sensor information, I, I will use, if if it's a temperature, I, I put some temperature that's way out of range to either show an error or a missing value, that kind of thing. So knowing how to deal with those for me was uh, was interesting in, in, in this aspect. And also this last part of like moving around or if you are working with factors and, and such that you can also, because I, I of course the NA is an NA, so you probably, and and in and, and, and some cases I've said it that not having information is also an information. So if a data is missing, sometimes it's already giving you, if it's in a survey, something is sometimes it's just because they don't know or something mm -hmm. because they don't want to answer. So knowing that information about uh, uh, NA is also sometimes tell you something. So having them <laughs> there that you can uh, manipulate them, visualize them and, and analyze them, I think is, is important. Yeah. Yeah, the missing can mean a lot of things. Yes. Um, <laughs> very cool. All right. I know okay. I can't remember who it is next week. Um, is it you, Flores? Yes. Okay. The, 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 the usual I suspects. I, yeah, I knew someone was signed up. I couldn't remember. So it's I think it's Flores, then back to you, Nelson. And uh, yes. not sure past that. I, I've got 24. But other than that, I'm not sure. All right. Um, Great. I don't have any other uh, thoughts about this chapter. So if that's it, then I will see you next week. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And see you. And see yeah. You. Thank you. Not again. Okay.